What's up, everybody? Sean here with another Live to Roll video. Uh, this week, we are hanging out with our friends, Nikki and Ashley from the Women's Show. Uh, but we're going to be talking about some heat or temperature regulation. Um, let's just get into some intros. I am Sean, a C5, C6 quad from a snowboarding accident um, 18 years ago almost. Coming up. Tom, send Crazy. it away. What's bro. your date? Uh, it's actually January 31st. It's coming up this next Monday. Okay, so, nice. Day before yeah, next week's show. Uh, you know, uh, anniversary. I don't, know, I don't never know what to call those days. Um, it's always funny. Uh, I never really know what to do. But in any case, sorry for the, getting sidetracked. At the start, what's up, everybody? If you don't know me, I'm Tom Conaway, uh, C5, C6, quadriplegic. I've been paralyzed for 24 years, going on 25. Um, but mine's still a ways away. And uh, yeah, let's toss it on over to our guests today, Nikki and Ashley. Hey, what up, ladies? What's up, guys? I'm Ashley. I'm Nikki. I'm a C4 quad. I'm a T6 paraplegic. We were injured in a car accident in 2019. And we're from Chicago, baby. Chi Town represent. <laughs> let's go. Uh, oh, my the one, the, you, oh, shoot. I forgot. I don't have Nikki's uh, tag up there. Uh, but you guys are in the one city that's actually cold you mean me and tom complain out here in california but uh hey we think it's a cool day today. get some rainy weather yeah. um you know it's been a little chilly and blustery the sun's shining today it's not bad but it is pretty windy um so i'm not gonna talk too much smack. what up mark uh yo mark knows about that cold weather out there in michigan yeah michigan's uh, cold too man Debbie, what's cracking homie yeah, 18 degrees Hope everybody is out there feeling Chicago's good. Chicago's 10. Oh Damn. my God, it's snowing. <laughs> it feels like negative two. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, that's like the wind chill going on, it might be. I mean, uh, 10 degrees is already technically negative temperatures on the Celsius scale, you know, telling us weirdos with Fahrenheit, uh, where we're still <laughs> in the positive region, but, you know, that's technically freezing. Water freezes below 32, so. It's snowing oh, out there. It's freezing. Yeah, dude, that is cold. Uh, that's a, I'm out here complaining. It's like 60 degrees. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, guys, you guys are like wishing that was like a, a summer day. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Well, I don't have to wear a sweater. What up, Peter? How's it going, buddy? Um, uh, yeah, to start us off, uh, before we get into talking about how temperature affects us and what we do to uh, combat that. Uh, I just wanted to start off by talking about a little bit about like why we uh, struggle with temperature as uh, paraplegics and quadriplegics. Uh, I do want to separate the two into different camps because I think quads um, do have a little bit tougher job temperature temperature regulating than some paras. Uh, that's not saying all don't uh, you know have some degree of struggle with it, but uh, I do know a lot of quads that have a real, real hard time, especially with cold. Um, and That's, particularly yeah. myself, I really struggle with overheating, um, you know, which we've talked about in the past and we can touch on uh, later in the episode. But why does that affect us? Um, it's mostly just the result of the spinal cord injury and the, um, you know, communication issues our body has with our brain. So when we start to feel cold, um, our uh, blood vessels will, like, our body will tell, our brain will generally tell our body to constrict the blood vessels in our body um, and, like, send the blood to, you know, certain regions of our cells. And, um, like, the blood vessel constriction helps warm you. Similarly, in the heat, um, your body is usually signaled by your brain to start sweating when it feels like warmer temperatures in different regions of your body. Um, quads, it's and all pairs, uh, everybody with spinal cord injury, injury generally struggles with that as well. Like I don't sweat except for when I'm getting dysreflexic, which is my autonomic nervous system triggering that response uh, rather than, you know, our normal, uh, you know, nervous system, central nervous system, just taking care of it and triggering our brain. Um, so that's why it's just a communication error, you know, with the regions of our body that we can't talk to. Um, and there's lots of tricks and solutions to managing it. 
Um, and I guess we can just jump on into that. Uh, and before we do, Morgan, since you're in the chat, you commented last time about my floppy hand. Um, and you said it uh, looked uncomfortable. Um, I have had splints and things in the past. Um, the right side is my weak side. I can like flex my wrist uh, freely on my left and I can supinate and pronate, but on my right side, I can't because it's just more paralysis over here. Uh, it's just how the cards fell, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I know it looks uncomfortable because it's hyperextended. It's really not. That's why it's kind of just hanging there is because it is kind of the neutral, comfortable position. It probably isn't the best for a TBH um, mm -hmm. because, you know, it's just not good for the joints and the tendons to be hyperextended like that. You'll see me kind of catching myself and like holding my hand, arresting it, you know, in a more neutral position. But honestly, it doesn't hurt me. Um, it's just, I don't even think about it. It is kind of comfortable, like neutrally comfortable. Um, but I'm going back to OT and it's something we're going to be talking about with my OT and like getting some wrist splints and stuff. So just, uh, no, I know you weren't insulting. I just wanted to explain it since you did comment on the video last time and I read it. So I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, just explain why I was like that. Yeah, I didn't want to. I, I was going to message back, but I, I figured you could give a better answer on that uh, and everything and your own stuff. So, but yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> okay, well, let's uh, turn it over to the but, experts. Nikki and Ashley, how do you guys handle the cold in crazy chilly Chicago? Layers. <laughs> yeah. Lots of layers. What did, will you explain yours a little bit? So, for me, I'm always cold, always. Um, <laughs> that's our dogs. Baby uh, baby. Shout out to all the puppies out there. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, it's, it's like Nikki said, a lot of layers. I wear my yeah. long sleeve, my sweater, my Snuggie, my beanie, my Snuggie hoodie, <laughs> and it, it feels, I don't know, for me, I don't know. Do you guys get like the shivers when you start to get really cold? Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. And I, I yeah. used to never feel like that before. And now I'm always getting the shivers. Uh, I get the shivers. Like, I'll like just start shaking my body to like try to create some yeah. friction. Uh, but yeah. also the hardest like time I have with the cold is like I get tight because all I want to do is just like get, you know, it's like close to myself as I can. And I'll wrap up in a blanket, like pull it like real tight against me for a long period of time. And I don't know, like just the tenseness is so hard on my body. That's um, yeah. I yeah, feel like the cold just activates all types of pain, like nerve pain. Um, for me, they still have the rods inside of me. It makes my rods so cold. And like mm -hmm. Ashley and I, when we you know want to medicate we have to go outside and it's freezing like <laughs> we put on like five sweaters just yeah, to it's five like sweaters your scarf yeah your scarf all like, the hoodies you're wearing yeah because i'm just <laughs> trying to prevent my rods from getting cold especially since mine is like from like all down my back like when i could feel that it's just so uncomfortable like it's not fun at all that's yeah. The, probably the worst thing for me in the cold is feeling the all the pain that comes with it and the rods like it's just not fun yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are there inside uh i can't really relate because i don't have any uh but my dad uh, has a bunch of plates and screws in his legs uh and he really really struggles in the cold there's also something that like a lot of people don't realize is with, like colder temperatures uh kind of like higher pressures and like that barometric pressure change that we don't necessarily even like sense or feel, but our body generally does, can have a huge effect on, um, you know, like the pain and stuff. Um, but the cold makes everything sharper and more intense, for sure. Um, what I do in my apartment when I get chilly is like, I got a space heater um, that I got like close by me, uh, like set up, just like hit me. Uh, and that works good. When I grew up, we had a fireplace. Uh, there's really nothing like radiant heat um, from like a you know a source like a fireplace. Uh, it's just a different kind of heat than like a space heater. Um, yeah. You know, like a hot water bottle. Those like are really awesome. 
but not very commonly used these days. And then what I use in like replacement of that is I usually like a heat pillow. So I have like a couple of pillows like full of flaxseed and you can like use other stuff too. That's just the most common like thing to fill it with. And you can microwave it. You pop it in the microwave for a couple minutes uh, and it comes out really hot and like radiating heat. And it stays that way for a good like 20, 30 minutes. Uh, it can be like a really awesome way to heat up quick is just like heat up the heat pillow and hug that. Uh, now the ones that I've gotten have been like made by my mama. Shout out mama. If you're out there watching. Um, and uh, you know, like other people, but you can buy them online and there's lots of like heat, like things like that. Uh, heat packs, hand warmers, stuff. Hand warmers, I don't know. They're usually not good enough for me. Um, to like heat up my whole body. Useful if you're like out, um, you know, just like keep it in your pocket or something, which I use a lot of, but those are some of the tricks and solutions that I that I use. And just like um, Ashley and Nikki, I'm always covered up. Like, I mean, most of the time in my apartment, like I have a blanket wrapped around me, uh, just kind of like keep the chill off. Um, and yeah, I just layer up, wrap up. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, really. how about you, I'm curious, you? Tom. Yeah. At what temperature are you starting to bum bundle up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, mind. good question. Um, <laughs> well, it's tricky. Sean and I were kind of talking about this um, before the show. Like, I'll like bounce between hot and cold like a couple times in a day. Maybe I usually wake up chilly uh, just because I don't know. Like, I got. Um, I don't like to sleep with like a lot of covers on. Um, I don't know, my body, my skin just gets sensitive, like makes me spasm. My legs always get tangled up in it. I gotta wake up and fix them. And, um, so I usually just like, uh, so a lot of times sleep with the blanket thrown off, but I always wake up in the morning freezing, flipping cold. And like that will screw me for the first couple hours of the day. Uh, meaning like I'll have to, if I gotta go out, I gotta bundle up my big like comfy sweater. Or um, if I'm chilling like at home, then I'll just wrap up in my blanket. And I don't know, that's probably like around between like 50 and 60 degrees. Like in the low 60s, that's enough to give me a chill now. That sounds crazy to you guys probably. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that's like below 70 degrees. That's where my body starts to get chilly. Um, oh, dude, I'm the same. I'm freezing. <laughs> it sounds nuts for a lot of people out there. Now, I grew up in... Northern California, which it was, I mean, during the winter, it like was seldom below, like above like 50 degrees. Like, you know, it would get up to like mid fifties during the day. And we didn't really get the snow because we're in the Bay area, which is like right at sea level. So the ocean keeps the, you know, air temperature mostly below above freezing, but we would get a ton of rain and there's nothing harder than like being soaking wet on like a freezing ass day, you know, and like having to deal with like wet clothes and, you know, being out and about in the rain can be a huge struggle. Um, so I do have a lot of experience with that growing up, but that's why I moved to SoCal to run away. <laughs> <Smart. Nice. laughs> um, I was gonna say, be like I think, <laughs> I don't know about you, but most of the quads I know are at least out here are all like the same as like, like once it's, if it's in the sixties, I'm cold. Like I'm, <laughs> or I at least need a hoodie on. Like I can't be in a t-shirt just hanging out. Like there's no, like even at like set, like mm -hmm. for me to be like in a t-shirt or even just a long sleeve and no hoodie, it's gotta be like over 70. To, yeah, for right sure. now I could turn my heater on and it would tell me the ambient temperature, but I would say it's probably like 70 here in my apartment right now. Um, and I have a long sleeve on. But before that, I was wrapped up in my blanket, um, you know, just to keep my shoulders warm, um, stay a little cozy. Um, but I'll like be wrapped up, sit in front of my heater, and then five minutes later, I'll be overheated and I'll be like throwing the blanket off, turning the air conditioning on, like taking my shirt off, trying to cool down, because I'll flip like that, you know, like I'll overheat myself and then all of a sudden I'll be too hot. Do you guys ever struggle on the opposite end of the spectrum, like overheating? I definitely do. Like I noticed after my injury, like I used to love like 
warm weather now i just can't do it like when it gets like what would you say like in the summer like you're pretty you're like once it gets like 90 degrees here and in chicago it gets like humid like it's no type of yeah breeze. that's what i can't do is the humid it's, so hard. <laughs> it's, it's horrible and even that like the heat messes with my rods like i could feel them get like really um hot uh, i struggle big time with overheating like i i catch it quick i'll be fine but if i get overheated it's a whole different monster uh, like I'll always take being cold over getting overheated because my body will just start to shut down. Uh, like I'll get really lethargic. I'll get really weak and super dizzy. And I like the weakness, like the body weakness. Like, I mean, it'll get so bad. I'll have a hard time even communicating. Uh, I feel yeah, like I'm going to pass out. To cool uh, off. Yeah. And it's hard and to it cool is off. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, know, you can take all your layers off, but there's only, you know, so much you can take off. You can, right. you can only get so yeah, naked. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I found in the, the best... summer, getting comfortable. Like, I, like, would always feel like I want to cover up, but, and I didn't like my legs at first, and I just had to get over that real quick, because I did not, I could not do the heat here. Like, I was like, I don't care, I'm going to be naked. People would just say stuff to me, I'm like, I'm going in my, my sports bra and my shorts, because I'm, then I'm not going. Like, I can't. And yeah. Ashley would, like, laugh at me. She's like, she gets really hot. And I need to make sure, like, there's an AC near me yeah. and stuff. So I know, like, I have to really think things through in the summer. Or we bring the spray bottle. Or we bring the spray bottle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, bottle. you know, that's, like, the whole spray temperature. Spray bottle is key. Yeah. Is, uh, thinking it through. And, you know, this is, like, my mantra on the show. Anybody that, like, <laughs> is, like, regularly know, you know, like, preparation is key. Oh, uh, you know, you got to prep, you got to prep for the cold, you got to prep for the war or whatever it may be. And, you know, we're so lucky nowadays with technology, like you can hop on the iPhone app and like be good to go, uh, you know, but it's, uh, it's still, you know, like having that foreknowledge and then knowing how to prepare and get yourself ready for it. And that's just like, part of it's just like knowing that, okay, I might be outside for this amount of time, but then I know I'm going to be inside where there's going to be a heater and I'll have a chance to warm up before I got to go out again, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty bad. Like I'll be like caught out, you know, not ready for uh, cold weather. A lot of times I'll, especially here in California, we'll go from like mid seventies to like 50 degrees in like, you know, an hour. Like as soon as the sun yeah, goes it, down, it drops. Yeah. Um, oh. And I'll be out enjoying my day and then the sun will go down. And you know, I'll get you know caught up in some shade, and I'll get chilly real quick. Uh, but also movement, move your body. Uh, that can be a really great thing to warm up. It sounds so silly, but like I'll like if I know I gotta go out and I have like a really bad chill or something, like I'll just like start doing some jumping jacks and like move my body, like and you know just try to move around, get some blood flow, get the circulation going, and, like get my blood pressure up a little bit. Uh, to help you know like move and circulate uh, the blood throughout my body and uh, it makes a big difference i feel like it, does. it makes a really big difference so uh, i even have different temperatures if i'm in my chair like i'm always going to be more moving even just sitting here you see me moving back and forth like i'm just more active and moving and i tend to warm up more but if i sit down in my couch and i'm kind of in that relaxed state I cool down fast. I don't know what it is, but like my body relaxes more. The muscles, like I'm just that sitting drops my temperature significantly. Like I can be hanging out all fine t-shirt, whatever, but I know if I'm going to sit down in the couch, I have to bring my hoodie because once I sit in the couch and I settle for a few minutes, I'm going to have to put the hoodie on because I get cold. Like, yeah. I, I don't know what that, yeah, it's just, but that little bit of movement, just being in my chair keeps me that like warm enough for most of the time. But yeah. It's, it's a huge thing. Um, and I was going to ask you, Ashley, do you do anything? You said scarves and stuff. That's my main thing is warming my neck for a quad. Like, Nikki, you said your rods in your back. It's the same. So, you know, I have plates and screws and everything in my neck. So when that stuff cools down, it's just hell. So I use one of those neck gaiters. I have, like, one of those thick fleece neck gaiters. Like, instead of, just because it's easier than a scarf, there's no flaps for me to deal with. Um... And I'll just put that neck gaiter on and just keep it around my neck all day. Like I've even had my t-shirt on before when it's like that 68, 6 like degree, whatever. Like, and I'm like, it's not quite cold enough to put my hoodie on. 
like I'll have a t-shirt. I'll put my neck gator on it because if my neck's warm, I'm comfortable. <laughs> I'm warm. I'm like, yeah, I don't care. Like I'm, I feel that. good. So yeah, yeah, that's just one of my big things. Yeah, my it's the same thing for me. My ears and my neck. Ears. Um, you know, it sounds so weird, but like, I when I was younger, um, like, I'd be like this all the time, like covering up my ears. I'd be at school like this. I'd just be out and about like that, like, I, every like all the time. I'll be like, put your damn hands down. Uh, like I can't, gotta keep my ears warm. But then I'd like volunteer like my siblings and my parents to like sit there and hold their hands on my ears and keep me warm. Um, <laughs> but, but then I like just like started living in the hood. Um, you know, like hoodies were my life. Um, I, I, always <laughs> need be, I, I always had to have a, like a sweatshirt with a hood uh, that I could flip up to like be able to cover my ears and keep my ears warm. I found this trick when I was like older I could like put my headphones on the outside of my hood and it would like be kind of like yeah. earbuffs. I could like bump nice. my music and like keep my ears really warm. Uh, so I would do that a lot. Like if I was chilly, like taking the bus somewhere or, you know, uh, do my thing. But yeah, the also like my hands, my hands and my feet, um, you know, those are just like the points in which you like lose and gain like a lot of your temperature. Um, so, you know, always got to warm the mitts um, or, you know, cool your hands off and cool your feet off. Do um, you or Ashley, um, probably not Nikki as much because you have more a uh, can function, but do your guys' hands get to the cold to the point and like almost numb out to where like they can't, like my hand, especially my right, because my right's my weaker arm, this hand will get like fully numb and tingly when it gets cold like and i can't like it gets like i have very little sensation in it but it gets like dead dead like i, I don't know if that happens to anybody else or if that's just me um yeah like uh, my hands will <laughs> go ahead you guys let's let the ladies answer first no yeah that's happened to me before that i no never try to get that cold because it is yeah. really uncomfortable but the times it has happened like uh, recently we had went to this market here around christmas time so it was cold and my hands started getting like that. It was all red and it started like just the nerve yeah. pain and like the tingles. It's like your hands permanently asleep and it like won't wake up. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, hate like that feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I get that all that the time, especially in the right. Sure. And then because you can't wear certain gloves, you're like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't and wear you have gloves. To your really joystick, hard, at least for me in my power chair. Oh. The, I get the numb hand thing when they get really cold. Um, you know, like if I'm out about um, that, like, I don't know. It's weird. It's not like they fall asleep, but it's just like the numbness from the cold um, it is what it is. It's a different kind of numbness. Uh, but I think that's just mostly attributed to poor circulation. Um, you know, the thing that's crazy is my legs get super cold. And I wear shorts a lot because they're a lot more comfortable for me. And, a lot easier to adjust, but uh, I'll get caught out. Like, I'll be okay. I'll go, like, touch my legs, and they'll be purple. And, like, they'll be so cold to the touch. Like, I could put my fingers, like, push my fingers into them, and, like, they'll change colors and stuff. And I don't know. Like, I've just been told that's poor circulation. You know, that's what it is. That's, yeah. You know, you know, do more to help fix it or just, like, bundle up my legs. When I'm, you know, with my people – Usually, like, I'll, you know, have a blanket, um, you know, if I know I'm going to be out and about, like, push the vanity aside, uh, wrap the blanket around my legs and, you know, keep my legs warm, uh, especially out camping, stuff like that. Um, and I try not to let the temperature, like, avert me from doing things too much. Um, it's easy to let, let it get away. It, it does sometimes. Uh, like, I won't go out really extreme weather. But usually, uh, I'll try to push myself to, you know, endure it. Just it sounds super funny, but like I'll think more thoughts. Oh. <laughs> it honestly helps. Like if you think about how cold you are, and you think about the cold, it feels like it makes it so much worse. Like if you're just completely <laughs> stuck on it, it's just that's all you're, you know, that's all you're thinking about is how cold you are. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. What up, Celtic Bear? Yo, Mister. Mr. Tipton with the super chat. Appreciate you, man. Uh, love yeah, you, bro. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you for always contributing to the Live Trail fam. Uh, we're about halfway through the show, uh, so I think it's a good time to probably thank our sponsors, too. And I want to um, touch on some of the comments 
uh, started talking to our people. If y'all got any questions or, you know, just anything you want to uh, shout out. Uh, we do have a couple questions about, or just like mentions about uh, heaters and hand warmers and stuff. So I yeah. want to talk about that after this, but we can go ahead and uh, like, cause just some of the, the things you have to watch out for when you're using some of those products. Uh, Thanks. Could Louis, be a little bit scary. Thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, uh, Louise, um, thank you. Another uh, friend of the show, guest of the show. Oh, love you, man. Appreciate you, dude. Friend of Triumph. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, let's talk. I, Mobility professionals, urology professionals. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, they're sponsors to our show. Uh, mobility professionals is an awesome uh, rehabilitation equipment company, uh, durable medical equipment company. Uh, they specialize in rehabilitation equipment, be, being wheelchairs specifically, but they uh, specialize in a whole range of rehab equipment. Uh, you can find out, out a lot more details on their website, uh, but they're an incredible company. Uh, that uh, knows and understands the needs of, of individuals like us and the importance of rehabilitation equipment uh, and how it enables our independence. Uh, but they really make it a priority to understand that and help you out the best you can, get the right equipment um, to enab enable you uh, maximize your independence in your daily life. And uh, do you want to take their sister company, Sean? Shout out Urology Pros. Yeah, dude. Thanks for doing that. Uh, and yeah, Urology Pros is their sister company, which is a national catheter brand. So you can anywhere in the country, you can get your catheter supplies through them if you want. Uh, and they are a great company. Uh, so check them out. And um, yeah, they're uh, awesome. Both like the customer service, everything about the company. We're friends with them. We literally know everybody there. They're support all the nonprofits and different stuff in the community around here and they're just uh, great companies all around they're really of the community you know they hire individuals they hire disabled individuals they um the rehab specialists that they have you know are really awesome and you know have a very meaningful understanding of you know the needs um, of us pairs and quads specifically um, a whole range of disabilities um and uh, you know how important it is to enable independence in our daily life you know really comes down to the equipment that we have uh, nowadays so uh, they are a really incredible company uh, both of them in terms of uh, getting you what you need uh, when it comes to your medical supplies and medical equipment so if you can go give them a shout out go check them out if you're looking for a change if you're looking for a company um, and yeah let them know literal sent you if you decide to yes thank you we appreciate that and uh yeah, thank you guys uh, for uh, everything. Thank you, Ashley, for uh, shouting out, waving at the sponsors. Um, it's one yeah. of those girls club. <laughs> That's me. Get those quad arms up there. Let's go. She was having too much fun with that. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> um, that was so, please, for, please forgive me if I'm getting your name wrong, but it's Chad from Able Outdoors, right, Sean? Yeah. Okay, Chad. What's up, dude? I saw Able Outdoors was in the building uh, commenting. I just wanted to uh, shout out our boy. Um, make sure to tell you guys to go check out Able Outdoors. Really awesome, uh, cool uh, channel, website. Uh, they do a lot of stuff. But the reason I really specifically want to shout it out is be outdoors. Um, I During my adolescence, big 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 part of my childhood was uh, going out fishing and then going out like in the wetlands and like filming wildlife with my dad it was just like a hobby of ours we were like uh both really into cinematography and like wildlife uh cinematography and it sounds kind of weird when we'd wake up at like three o'clock in the morning get my mama up out of bed never come you know help get me up and uh, we'd go cruise out to the wetlands uh at like you know three or four o'clock in the morning and like it would be icy and freezing and you know, I mean, you could see your breath and it sounds like wild and crazy um, for a quad to be like deciding to go out there and do that. But I mean, Chad could probably tell you like, it, there's like no better feeling in the world than like being out there like the brisk, like morning cold, you know, waking up with nature and stuff, it was really cool. But um, you know, that was a really like fun, crazy thing. Like I was thinking about before the show, um, you know, exposing myself to some, extreme extreme cold on the reg uh, but we just like 
prepared really well. Like my dad would always bring a bunch of hand warmers. I'd always be super bundled up, wear my thermals. Uh, you'd be good to go and then uh, sip on some hot coffee. That's kind of my trick for cooling down too, is like I'll eat ice. Like the idea is like cool myself like from the inside out. Chew on some ice cubes, swallow some ice cubes. That cools my core temperature down real quick. But also when I'm hot or when I'm chilly, uh, the opposite, hot drinks. So got my cool. I had read once before that in the cold, your body wants warms and like hefty foods. And in the summer, it wants light and cold yeah. things. I was like, well, it's such, a, it's such an easy way to explain things, but it made sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it really totally. does work. Yeah, you, you I know, love like a I'm, hot cup of something on a cold day. When you're freezing, you drink something yeah. warm. It's so nice. Water. Go ahead, Kyle. Right. I'm just saying, you're sipping on some warm tea right now. Uh, I do have warm tea. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that, that, like going that route, um, I mean, it just feels good to it not only warms your hands, holding like a hot cup of something, but you know, then sipping on it can warm you from the inside, which is really important and then we had a bunch of comments about heat pads heat blankets technology yeah. you know um modern <clears throat> times we're living in grants us access to some cool things to help keep us warm now what i have to say though just because i've known several quads specifically who have burned themselves on heat pads um and, uh you can burn yourself with heat bl heating blankets um so it, it could be really dangerous. So if you do decide, it can be super useful. But if you do decide to use something like that, be very mindful of, you know, sleeping on top of it. Um, you know, it's usually like you can lay it on top of you. It's probably better. Um, so you can toss it off you if you need to. Um, you know, understanding the controls and stuff, you know, knowing that the high temperatures would be too much for you. Just understand what you're using because there's a ton of stuff out there and they're not like specifically regulated especially for quads yeah, uh, if, if, like, body. i would say at the very least make sure it has like an emergency shut off after like a certain like a time shut off you know it's not going to stay on for more than a certain amount of time because i know too many people that have gotten burns from pads blankets all that stuff uh and they can just be just, big gnarly burns that you like get over a long period of time but you know, you just don't even realize you're getting. Um, so I don't know. Like I, I've had heating blankets before, uh, but I don't use any now. I just have like 18 blankets on my bed and just layer up if I need to. Um, you know, just because I found that safer, more comfortable, um, and don't have to rely on anybody to plug it in for me, uh, which you know is nice too. Um, but they can definitely be useful. And I don't know, I'm a big fan of, like you said, the heating pillows and hand warmers. Uh, I love my hand warmers. Especially, I never like, really use many hand warmers, actually. Same. Sure. But it seems like a good idea. I, so I uh, here I have like space heaters in my room and then here in the studio and stuff. Um, because typically the temperature in the house is a little bit cool for me. Like it's usually like when I wake up in the morning it's like 67, 68 degrees. And that's cold for me to get out of my blankets and not have any clothes on. Uh, so like I have my space heater on a timer that turns on a half hour before I wake up. So my room yeah. is already like 73, 74 by the time I'm getting out of bed. <laughs> so, okay. uh, I use timers a lot, a lot like that too. <laughs> like with my air conditioning, like I don't know what it is. I love to be like bundled up at night, um, but then like have like some cool air flowing. So like I'll turn my air on for like a half an hour, but if I leave it on for any longer than that, like I know I'm gonna be freezing. So I'll just like put the 30 minute timer, will just like get me comfy enough to fall asleep and then it'll shut off. So hopefully I won't freeze myself out throughout the night. Um, and then there's dysreflexia. Uh, I wanted to talk about that and how it affects your temperature. Yeah. <laughs> um, now it makes me hot. Uh, AD like yeah, makes me super, super warm. If I start to get it, um, you know, it could be like freezing ass, like 30 degrees outside and I can be like flush and like, you know, feel like I'm going to die from like overheating, um, from getting AD. Um, now it sounds crazy and it is kind of crazy. I don't advocate this, but I saw like 
this guy, I won't say his name, uh, but he was like triggering his AD by just like leaning a certain way. And he was doing it on purpose. I'm like, yo, what are you doing, dude? Like, uh, he's like, oh, I'm trying to trigger my AD. I'm like, what? That sounds crazy. He's like, no, I'm just trying to like get a little sweat on my forehead going to like make the outside more comfortable. He's like, I gotta like, you know, go cruising for a little while. I'm just trying to like get a little sweat on. Oh. Like, but I was like, yo, that's wild. Like that is the craziest thing. But so many nights I've like gone out like drinking with the homies and like, it'll be, you know, 30, 40 degrees in the middle of winter coming home, like on the Metro. I got like an hour and a half long trip in like the rain. And yo, like my AD will have saved my life because it's like, uh, you know, whenever I'm drinking, uh, I gotta pee constantly, and I'll usually like have to cat on the way home. And but that AD, like that heat that it gives my body. Uh, now it sounds super crazy and weird. I don't advise <laughs> doing this. No, oh. drink. It wasn't anything it I ever did. On purpose. <laughs> it was just kind of like a happy accident. <laughs> Um, like they made it a little easier to get home on some of those chillier nights. Um, but you know, something to think about too. Uh, if you're like really, really desperate, you know, like drink two cups of coffee, like let your body get a little AD on before you cat, and then you're good to go because you'll be all warmed up. I'm dead. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and like, I don't know. It's a very, very dangerous side effect of paralysis and spinal cord injury. It can, uh, it is different for every injury, just like most aspects of our disability. Um, and if you have a severe AD reaction, it can be super dangerous. So don't be going trying to ex like explore this stuff if that's how you are. Yeah, no, <laughs> we do not advise. Please, we do not advise do not activating your AD. Lift on the record, Lift Roll does not support activating your AD on purpose. Okay. No. Yes, no. thank you. For legal reasons. No. <laughs> For legal reasons, exactly, exactly. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, uh, there. That, it really is crazy the AD and stuff, and I, I know exactly what you're talking about because, like, yeah, if my AD is going, I'm a little bit, like, warmer. But the, so the one problem I've had when I've had like catheter changes and like on a day that's really cold and I'm peeing, like mm -hmm. I feel warm, like you're saying, like I feel warmer and I probably am warmer. So I don't yeah. want to put my hoodie on, but I'll notice later, like my face is sweating, like I'm sweaty, but it's cold in the house. Like, or it's cold where I like, and like, I know that that's making, like, I can feel how cold like it is now because I'm like sweating and it's 50 degrees out. Like it's yeah. not. Like, you know, like that now your face is cold with like the wall, like not great. Like, yeah, I don't know. I just, that's good. It made me like feel not like warm. <laughs> well, you know, no, I mean, I, I get you, man. Like it could be a really chilly day. And I mean, I will sometimes like get a little dysreflexic from just drinking too much water or, you know, like yeah. I'll have a cup of coffee after drinking a bunch of water. And then like my bladder will just fill up real quick and, you know, I don't get to a cath quick enough and. I'll start to get like the early symptoms. Uh, like, hey, you got to pee. I'm starting to get a little AD. Uh, but then I'll cath and afterwards, like, I'll be like instantly overheated. Like, I'll get like a hot flash. That's the best way I can describe it. It's like, I'll yeah, be freezing. Like that, yeah. I'll cath, like, and you know, like my AD symptoms will, you know, start to go away. But then I just get this hot flash and like, I'll be, you know, turning my air conditioning on, trying to cool off. It's pretty weird. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how to describe AD. And for me, hot flash is it. Because I feel like I'm like, you know, you're sweating and you feel hot, but then yeah. I still feel cold. Like I still want to cover over me, but then I'm sweating. So I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, I, that's exactly how I feel too, usually. That hot and cold, it's just like confusing on your body. Yeah, yeah. there's nothing worse than that like cold, clammy feeling when you're like freezing, but you're like just, you know, beating sweat all over your skin. Ugh. It's nasty. Yeah, it's gross too. I'd be feeling like nasty. Yeah. yeah. For me, when I experience AD, like in the weather, I just get like really dizzy and like, um, and I do get hot. It's splotchy too. And I get, um, it's on my legs. Oh, I get like, my skin gets like splotchy. Does that even make sense? I don't even know how to describe yeah. that. I actually call no, it. It's a, it's a side effect of autonomic dysplasia. I get blotchy yeah. on my face. Like I'll get these like weird red blotches on my cheeks and then one ear will be really red and really hot. 
but the other one will be normal temperature. It's the weirdest thing. Oh, it is. See, weird. and then for me, because like I have, what is it? My right side has less filling. So like I, this shoulder, my left shoulder is just drenched in sweat if I'm experiencing AD. And I'm like, mm. can you chill? <laughs> just this one shoulder, that's all. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. Does it help in the summer though? In the summer? I'd be, I'd be thriving in the summer. I need to move to Cali. <laughs> <laughs> that with me. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, I don't know. I, I definitely don't know if I could do Chicago weather, the East Coast uh, coldness. No, I feel no, like in, in the winter, we stay inside mostly because like it's just so cold. Oh, I would and also definitely snow. stay inside. Yeah, it's, it's just... not a good time. It's not it. Yeah, it's not fun. You just don't want to deal with anything that the cold comes with. And it's really cold right now. Like, super cold. And it'll probably be like this. <laughs> what do you do, um, like, to handle the cabin fever? Mm, like, we do. Inside. That's what they call it, right? Like, in Canada and Alaska, there are places where you're stuck inside all, like, you're snowed in. Like, there's no going out. Uh, like, do you guys ever get antsy? Like, you got to get out. Uh, and it's so, like, how do you deal with it? We're definitely, for me personally, I definitely get, like, the cabin fever. Like, I'm, I'm ready to, like, leave the house every once in a while because I'm a homebody, so, like, I don't really care. <laughs> but, like, for, for different reasons, I sometimes want to leave. And we'll find things to do. Or, like, On those do days, things in the house. Like, we've yeah, painted before. They, or, like, we paint do something different than we normally do just to like i don't know pass the time yeah. something fun make a puzzle yeah just something different i don't know and make it look like oh we're doing something different for the day and to stay inside because it's be so cold like i tell ashley this all the time it was okay before i used to take the bus everywhere before my accident i would bundle up all the time but now it's just so hard to do that in the chair because you feel so fluffy sometimes you yeah. your clothes are hanging <laughs> off your chair and like you're like, how do am I gonna wear all these layers? And like they don't even fit in my chair. You're trying to get on the tree. Yeah, you're trying to get like, and then you get on. Then I get inside like the car or when we used to take public transportation. Then I'm getting hot, so I want to take everything off. <laughs> so it's like it's just not fun in the chair. Like it's just not a fun experience the way that, because when I start getting hot, I start getting ad, and then I just need to take off everything. And that's kind of like the contradiction in the winter. Like even when I come inside in the winter, it takes about five minutes for my body to get like really hot. With all the layers yeah. I have on. Not I. I'll stay it's in my uh, snuggie in my car for a good hour or two to warm up. <laughs> takes me a long time to warm up. Um, usually it's like just what Ashley said. Usually a couple hours uh, before my body's like back to a comfortable, you know, temperature. And some days I'll just stay cold all day long. Um, wow. And yeah, like uh, Kelsey Bear just said it. Um, it, I don't know, like, I can usually dress pretty comfortably for the cold in my chair. Like, you know, if I get some comfy sweats on, um, and, like, I'll I'll just layer up. Um, and, like, I've even gone out, like, it sounds silly, but I'll just take a blanket. <laughs> just take a blanket with me, and I'll just, like, wrap up around my shoulders, um, you know? And it is what it is. Like, you want to judge me? Fine. Like, I don't care because I'm comfy, you know? And, like, I'd rather be comfy and have your judgment than, you know, be uncomfortable. Um, uh, but you know, I, that's probably very few people that would do that in the first place. And, you know, a lot of that stuff's just in our head. Um, but you know, that's the solution to, um, the, you know, it's nice that you have a car now, Nikki, cause that can be awesome. Yeah. Like huge to go and like turn some air on or turn some heat on real quick, especially when you're out and about, you know, I just need like a little like space to chill out and like get your body balance right and stuff it's kind of like a private area um you know semi-private at least um but you know cars can be super useful and um you know i can weather extreme temperatures just for short periods of time so you know i just gotta know my destination where i'm going um you know if it's a really hot day or if it's really rainy like wet cold day you know i i won't do public transportation like i'll arrange a ride i'll figure out access you know i'll do something like that um and you know the preparedness is key because you know those environments i can just ask the driver to you know roll the windows up and crank that heater or you know cool me down or whatever and uh, like it's all good but 
um, <laughs> Calvin Bear. I don't bring my pillow with me, um, you know, except for when I was going to I need a place to sneeze. I'm just kidding. Um, but the, you know, I'll just like, no, like, hey, I can do like 30 minutes outside, but after 30 minutes, I'm going to need a warm place to go, you know, whether it be a coffee shop I can escape into and just go chill out and sip on a warm drink or, you know, like, uh, if it's an evening, like, it's a struggle, like, going out with my friends, you know, socializing is, they'll want to be outside, like, in the chilly place. It's like, I can handle that for a little while, like, as long as I know we're going to, like, a bar afterwards where I can, like, have some refuge inside and, you know, like, a place that I can warm up and, you know, get comfortable and get in. Um, but, you know, I, I love the snow. Like, I love, uh, you know, places that are chilly and cold. Um, so, you know, I'll just say, you know, <laughs> um, and yeah, you know, just prepare the best I can. And I don't want to like suffering a little bit too. Uh, you know, it's just the nature of things, right? Um, you know, sometimes you just got to put up, put up with, you know, some uncomfortable temperatures for a couple hours and then you'll be good to go. <laughs> yeah. I'm the same way, Tom. Like I can handle it in bursts. Like if I, like if we're going to be outside for a half hour, 40 minutes, like, but I know we're going somewhere warm, then like, I'll just try to tough it out, keep my legs and stuff as warm as I can and then get in. But long periods of time, I'm done, dude. Like once my neck and stuff gets cold and I'm just tensed up like this and trying to stay warm at all costs, like I'm miserable. Like, don't even talk to me. Like, <laughs> just get me somewhere warm. <laughs> like, cause I'm not gonna be your friend right now. <laughs> I've, I've been in so many situations where, I don't know, like a lot of them were just like out with the family, you know, on like our fishing, you know, trips on the weekends or whatever. Like again, we'd like go and like get out to the lake sometimes, like before the sun comes up, 4.35 in the morning. And I mean, you still see your breath, like it's just cold outside, you know, early morning um, temperature and there's no end in sight. Like I'm going to be out there until the sun, you know, gets up and like it warms up and it's probably going to be like four, you know, like play like four or five hours. Like I know at that point I'll be comfortable, but it's going to be a couple of hours of just suffering. Now, my parents were like torturing me, um, you know, they would my dad always have hand warmers. My mom would just build me up. And I got pictures where like, you can't, you can maybe like see my nose because like, I got like three jackets on, like on top of like, you know, thermals. And then I have a blanket on top of that. And I'm just as bundled as I can be. And just like sleeping, you know, holding a fishing pole, like waiting for a bite or something, right? But, um, you know, like also struggling with the cold a little bit too, you know, just putting up with it. And it sounds silly, but like, that's what I would do. It's like, I don't think happy thoughts. I don't think warm thoughts. I'd be like, yo, you're going to be good in a couple hours. Like, I just try to start moving my body. Um, you know, the instant you like catch a fish or you get distracted by whatever it is you're doing uh, out in the cold temperature, you know, you forget about it too. You forget about the cold. If you're keeping your mind and your body active, um, you know, sometimes you can't ignore it. Y'all out there in 10 degree temperatures, it just is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah. There's like not really enjoying that too much. Um, you, know, you all said 40, 30 to 40 minutes. I'm like, uh, 15 no, minutes degrees, today's weather. Yeah, no maybe. way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, like five minutes most probably for me yeah, out there. And I'd be like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's brutal. You just start to feel yourself just tensing up to stay cold. It's just like your body, you can yeah. feel your body shriveling. See, and I hate that feeling because when you start getting that really tensed feeling, like for me, mm -hmm. that just makes my neck and everything hurt so bad. Like it just brings yeah. that pain because your muscles are so tensed and tight and just, just hurts, like it sucks. It really <laughs> yeah, uh, just sucks, it hurts. There's like no way around it either <laughs> in this cold. Like if you have to go somewhere, yeah. you just have to bear it. Yeah, you have to suffer. <laughs> But I the worst yeah, Celtic Bear said you were you were, must have been like uh, Kenny in South Park all bundled or what? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, little, that was little Tom right there. Oh, Kenny dude, in a wheelchair. Perfect, perfect description. Right. Like, I would talk and nobody could hear me because like my mouth would be all covered. It was the same exact thing. I'm dead. So you know what's funny? For years, like I said with the neck thing, the neck gator, before the neck gator, 
I would spend all winter with my freaking face in my hoodie all the way up. Oh, exactly like Ashley, but even higher. I get, I'll get cold and go all the way in, like freaking. But like, yeah, all the time covering. But same, like up to my chin like that, just because it's keeping the neck warm. And it's just like keeping that area warm. Um, but that's like my, for years and years, I was doing face coverings like way before this COVID stuff. I was cool. <laughs> uh, I, um, yeah, I found that the mask is a good replacement for that. And it's uh, a little bit more. It actually um, does keep my face warm. But it's just like yeah. using your like bre- the heat of your breath, right? You know, close yep. by to like warm yourself, you know, that general area. I would do the same thing all the time. Like there's so many pictures where I'd just be like, you know, tucked. <laughs> Uh, because no knows what and you know like like a little warm area to chill you like my hood up like my sweater pulled up yeah i think that's like the qu- the standard quad like position yeah. for a long time after my um injury uh, i had a trach for a few months like a tracheotomy uh when i was yeah. first in the hospital and i i don't know if it was just like PTSD from like the removal and the trauma and everything in the hospital but like I had very very hypersense like really bad sensitivity like around my scar uh, on my throat and to the point where like I couldn't even have fabric close to it and I would just like chill like this to like keep my shirt off my neck for years years and years and years like my sister still gives me shit about it Uh, and I kind of grew out of it like I just got over it but I mean it was so extreme like uh, I would have a hard time even like washing that part of like my body when I would shower and stuff. Like I scrub my neck, but like like this, and, you know, like trying to get around it because like I couldn't even touch it. Um, but that was like another reason why I kept my shirt up. So it wasn't only to keep warm. Sometimes it was just to keep the shirt off my neck. But yo, shout out Deep Bees because I saved my life. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, brands of clothing that are good too. It's, um, I don't know if it was Kelty Bear. Someone mentioned Carhartts. Uh, yeah, somebody did mention that. Um, I don't know. I don't really like the jackets so much because they're too rigid for me. I mean, they're worn. Um, keep you worn if it's your style. And, like, that's cool. I like the shorts. Um, they're pants. They're, like, a really solid material that's, like, good. But also, like, kind of not – They like, I can transfer well in those, like, kinds of clothes. Like, that kind of – I don't know what – kind of work material it is um but i just want to shout that out uh for any quads mm-hmm. looking for um you know normal looking shorts that are easy to transfer in um car and dickies um it's a certain kind of material like it's good really like hardy material but it doesn't have a ton of grip like at least it works for me for transferring and so yeah no quads, it's a and they stay like they don't bunch up too bad either um, yeah and then the other thing about the Dickies, and I think those might be too, is they're considered work pants, which gives them a high waist, which eliminates some of the uh, crack issues you have when you're bending forward and sitting in your chair all the time. It keeps your ass totally in there better. <laughs> so <laughs> just another note, side note. Uh, Kelsey, call me out. I guess I'm too, a little too fancy in the chat. No, my brother wears a lot of Carhartt. Um, you know, like my family's a bunch of farmers, so I'm very familiar with the clothes. Um, like I said, like the jacket specifically, like they're just too rigid for me. Like I need something. something. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what it is. You know what's a good winter jacket for my quads out there? A snuggie. <laughs> snuggie. I have did my winter I, I gotta jacket. Get a snuggie. And I just wear my snuggie everywhere. But it gets wet. It does get wet, so that's like downfall you can't like wear it in the snow or the rain but it's yeah. warm like it's warmer than my winter jacket i think in my opinion no snuggies keep it great because it also frees up your hands um you know you can yeah uh, put your arms through and you know still have some mobility while being covered which is great um and i don't know i have a snuggie um <laughs> I, don't really, I don't really use it too often to be, to be honest uh but I'd rather have like my shoulders and my back like wrapped around like the front rather than like have the front covered and then like my back kind of exposed. Um, mm-hmm. but I, don't know. I just like to get my neck. Uh, so yeah, I've actually never used this snuggie yet. I haven't quite. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I should get one though. 
You should. The one I have covers my back, too. It's like a hoodie, but it's like a stunky. Oh, like a full uh, over. Mm -hmm. There's actually, I forget what the company is now, but they did a presentation for Triumph at one of our things. Um, there's a company that makes accessible, like, wheelchair-specifically made, like, Snuggies. Like, they're made not to get in the wheels. They're made to go over and cover your legs and have different access points. They have pockets and stuff. Um, I will have to find that information and try to bring it back on here because I don't remember. But, yeah, I'll have to look that up. And, uh... Yeah. Actually, uh, Luis, I think, left already, but he did ask a question for you guys. Um, uh, do you guys have to deal with snow drifts on your sidewalks? Or do they clean the sidewalks? I don't really know. Oh, no. No. Actually, you want to tell your story? So, actually, there's a lot of times in the winter, because people don't shovel, that I have to cancel appointments, like, you know, my dentist appointment, doctor's appointment. Because even for us, we don't have, like, a direct access to like get to our car so we have to go in the to street the alley, yeah to the, the alley street. in the street to get to our car so if people don't shovel i'm not going nowhere dang that sucks yeah like because i hard. when i did try to go somewhere my wheel just kept turning like i was stuck so i was like okay well i'm not trying to go the entire way here and <laughs> this keeps happening so yeah, yeah shovel your side please <laughs> And not just the shovel size. Yeah. The whole side mock. Oh, they people do just a little shovel walkway, huh? And that's not wide enough. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's not a... wide enough. I feel like they need to make like an a, a ADA approved shovel. I know. I was huh? thinking that the other day. Yeah. I was like, I think they need to make an ADA approved shovel where it's like the width of a like all like whatever yeah. it's standard for wheelchairs because you like, make these like little the <laughs> That's actually a good idea. But I don't know if there's a... Ben says he doesn't wear jackets because um, it's hard to transfer. Uh, I feel you, man. Uh, I don't really wear pullovers. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, but, like, I always keep my jacket... Oh, here, let me turn a little bit. No, ben ain't lying. I always keep my jacket on the... Oh, showing off some tummy. Watch out, people. Um... I keep my jacket on the back of my chair, uh, like draped over the back, the, the sleeve, but it's, mm -hmm. and it's open on my back. Um, and I can just pop my arms in the sleeves real quick, pull it up, and then I'm good to go. Um, and if I transfer, I definitely not transfer that on, like it'll just stay on my chair generally, I, unless I want to, you know, keep it on while I transfer. Um, in which case, I don't know, hoodies is usually what I wear, but I have some thicker, um, like winter jackets. They're usually too constricting for my arms, um, to make transferring like super feasible, um, and the leaning and stuff. But that's kind of my trick is I just keep it over, like draped over the back of my chair. And like, I try not to leave the house without a jacket on because I always have one with me usually to pop it on if I need it. Um, and yeah, the, it bunches up. It slides down. The hood gets caught on the back of my chair all the time when I try to put the hood up. Um, and, you know, that's the nature of the beast. Um, <laughs> I don't know, like, I just, that's one okay. of my things, too, that I hate about. Um, like, so that's the thing with, like you were saying here in Southern California, we have like pretty, like, it'll be nice, like in the day, it'll be 70 degrees, you know? And then the sun goes down and it drops and it's freezing. And then it's like, but it, and it was freezing to start the morning. So like I have my hoodie on then I have to take it off, figure out what to do with it for the day. Cause I don't have like a cool hangover thing like Tom does on the back where I can just like, I have nowhere on my chair. I can really tuck it. So like, that's always like, like now I'm just carrying around a hoodie on my lap until it gets cold. <laughs> and it's like, all right, it's cold now. Put the hoodie back on. Like that's, that's what sucks about out here is that like back and forth. But, um, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the um, no, I like being able to pop it on and off real quick, like you said. Um, it's harder for pullovers for me, but I just got a sick ass pullover a couple months ago, which I've been rocking, and I kind of like. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, make it work, whatever. I'm kind of like you, Sean. I keep it on the back of my. I'll keep it on the back of my chair. I'll lay it though. I don't have like a hook or anything. I'll just lay it on my backrest. And I'll then when I fit it, I take it. It adds some inches between my back and stuff, but I don't hate it. It kind of helps my See, posture a little. 
<laughs> <laughs> and see, that's my issue is like, I've tried to do that, put it around the back. And like, I don't know, it feels just so like that pushes me just too far forward. Like I have my chair right perfect to where like any more forward and I'm like struggling to stay up, you know, like, so it's like that little bit makes it my trunk, my balance a little off. Like I have to scoot my hips out farther maybe. And like, I can kind of balance it back out, but um, that I'm sitting weird in the chair. It's all pain. You know, a really, really special, unique piece of clothing too, which Ben shouted out is, you know, his favorite thing to help keep him warm is his black, extra large, literal roll hoodie. <laughs> uh, um, shout out the merch game coming at you for literal. Go to literal.com. Um, the store has been redone. Um, it's a lot uh, more navigable to uh, get your right sizes. And, uh, check out what we got. Got some cool t-shirts, got some long sleeves, got some hoodies, got some cool stuff, got some hats. Um, go and check it out. Go and buy yourself some cool merch and uh, help support um, the channel. You got the little ladies over here modeling all this awesome stuff. Uh, yep, I got the long yeah. sleeve. She got the hoodie and, on. And Sean too. Sean too. Beautiful yeah, Sean. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I just don't look as good as they do in the gear, but it's cool. <laughs> I got my little hat on. I got to give me one of the long sleeves though. Let's and yeah. Go. Um, uh, a little bit. Celtic bear, <laughs> anti-tippers. Yes, I do have anti-tippers on my chair because I lean back way too much. Um, but uh, I was going to say, thank you for shouting out the website because I spent two days working and rebuilding the website store so that it actually functions and works properly. So please check it out. Even if you don't buy something, just go check out the store. Uh, and actually, Nikki and Ashley are both on the top of the banner. Same with Tom, Bob, you were all up there with uh, Brianna. Um, oh, if you're on your phone, I think it cuts some of us off, but hey. Zigzag, <laughs> we appreciate you. Yeah, go check out that merch. You have uh, two days on it, so don't even say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we had a comment a little while ago. Um, uh, not trying to get divisive on the pod or offend anybody, uh, but did someone did ask how we feel about vaccines and the booster stuff. Um, I think it's important to disseminate, um, you know, positive, meaningful, important information. I just got my booster yesterday. I'm not telling anybody what to do, but, you know, I do support vaccines, um, especially the COVID vaccine and the booster in regards to keeping everybody safe and, you know, not just yourself, but the people around you. Um, that's just my opinion on the matter. Uh, I'm not trying to be divisive or offend anybody out there, but, you know, I trust the science. Um, I make sure to educate myself the best I can, um, you know, from resources that I trust. And um, yeah, follow the CDC guidelines because, you know, they're out for our best interest, I believe. Um, but I just got my booster yesterday. My arm's sore, not gonna lie, but otherwise I'm feeling good, uh, no issues. And, uh, you know, I got some fun activities planned over the next couple of weeks where I'm gonna be out exposing myself to some larger groups of people and I feel a lot better and a lot safer doing that having um you know got my booster and um being fully vaccinated so yeah that's my opinion on it I don't know if anybody else wanted to add um uh, but no yeah that's I haven't got mine yet but I do plan to get a booster I've gotten my regular ones um and just same thing I just all I can tell you is one of the very worst times of my life was having pneumonia when I was first injured and having to get my lungs sunctioned and having oxygen, it was seriously like probably the, it might've been the worst week of my life. Like I, I can't think of many other times that I hated more than that week. Um, so that's all I know is I don't want to have to do any pneumonia suctioning lungs or any of that crap again. So if I can avoid that, cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, Absolutely. Um, you know, I still follow, you know, the rest of the protocols in order to like, limit my exposure and, you know, keep myself protected when I do go out. But, you know, uh, I think having, having the advantage of, you know, being a lot more confident that hopefully I won't get hospitalized, even if I do catch it, uh, because I'll have some antigens ready to go to help fight it off early on is, you know, what's going to benefit me most, but everyone's got to ultimately make that decision themselves. Um, and, uh, Yo, there have been some interesting studies about cannabis and cannabidiols, um, you know, not allowing the uh, COVID 
uh, you know, I've seen that recently. Virus, uh, interact uh, or bond with the cells. Um, now, this is just a few studies, and this is not promoting it to anybody, but uh, you know, just little little funny, little funny quinkening. Maybe it's just all the herb that's uh, keeping me healthy. <laughs> hey. All I know is I haven't got sick yet, and I've been around in close contact with people that yeah. tested positive a couple times. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's because of my cannabis use. <laughs> but but again again that's not meaningful science anybody. Uh, no. no. Uh, Ashley the science bitch. No. <laughs> um, uh, really? It'd be interesting how uh, the um, you know rest of the studies pan out um, for sure. But, yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. Do we have any other? I was trying to go through some of the questions and stuff in here too. Uh, yeah, just got a few just people just talking. Uh, yeah. Morgan said anti tippers are a must for the power assist wheels, and yes, they really are. Like having the emotional wheels, it's scary. Uh, Andrew Skinner, the founder for Triumph, is one of the only quads I know that rocks these wheels and does not have anti tippers, but he designed his chair to be like super hard to tip. Like it's like, does not tip back. So yeah. if you do that, then okay. But <laughs> uh, it still uh, scares me. Yeah, I, I still have my anti tippers cause I am not falling over. Babe, she falls, uh, I fall with them. Like, I don't know how. So I'm not got, like I'm so clumsy. <laughs> uh, it was yeah, funny. No. Uh, I watched one of your lives that you did with uh, Rachel, and you guys were talking about like times you had like fallen out of your chair or like flipped over, and it like gave me inspiration. We were talking about wheelchairs last week, and we told some stories of like, when we had flipped in our chairs or when we had fallen out. It was pretty funny. Yeah, I'm yeah. just laughing because I've never gotten hurt in any of those yeah. falls, but I'm sure one time when I do, it's not going to be funny anymore. But it's funny in the meantime when I fall. Really? I fall on the sidewalk and Ashley just kept going. I was I like, know she fell. Ash, <laughs> I'm right Please here. Fall. How are you falling? Are you like falling sideways out of the chair? Are you, you don't rolling keep forward? Where she's going? I've fallen everywhere. I've fallen sideways. I've fallen back. <laughs> and I've fallen, um, the time on the sidewalk was forward because I wasn't watching where I was going. That was my fault. I so hit into a really big bump. Oh, that is a key <laughs> thing that I will stress to everybody. Watch where you are rolling, cause little cracks, little little pebble, catch your caster, and like all of a sudden your day is done, or you're just <laughs> you're at least uh, having a bad day now. Then <laughs> yep. uh, you're on but, the floor. Yeah, <laughs> in a and that's what the one of my flip stories I told last week was trying to be all <laughs> hot at hot shot at school, like cruising around when I was going to college, and uh, there was like a crowd of people. So I thought I could cut the corner over a little grass patch and I had like smaller casters on my wheels and the grass was wet. So they just sunk and stopped and launched me forward out of the chair. <laughs> and the whole crowd of people just looked at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, but I had help very quick to get up. So, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, <laughs> that was just one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Olivia, in the okay. chat has debunked the cannabis uh, preventing COVID, um, which, you know, likely, um, I that makes a lot of sense. Uh, oh definitely a bummer. But the beautiful thing about cannabis is it has a ton of other positive um, medicinal effects, uh, which you can uh, continue to use um, cannabis for if you so choose. Um, and if it's uh, if that works for you. Yeah. Um, again, I'm not trying to uh, pressure push anybody, but as um, everybody on the show here uses cannabis uh, for some of the medicinal properties that it has um, in, you know, helping make it through everyday life um, easier and more functionally. Um, just want to shout it out. Uh, we'll okay. be having a 420 show coming up in a few months talking about it. Uh, It'll be a fun one. Yeah, yeah already inviting myself so <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. i will be yeah. crashing the live. Yeah, okay, <laughs> hopefully Bye. the weather is nice by then here yeah i know that's it <laughs> and yo, uh, you i know. would argue say 
if you're not falling out of your chair sometimes or at least coming close then you might want to consider pushing yourself to do a little bit more activities and you know <laughs> put yourself in your chair uh, no That's like true I'm not, honestly i'm not saying be re be reckless um but i you know mm. it's okay to push yourself a little bit um you know that's how you learn that's how you learn what you're capable of i mean there have been some crazy crazy times where i've um done some things uh you know in my chair that probably weren't safe <laughs> um <laughs> i've fallen out of my chair a couple times <laughs> trying to do some things that i thought i could do and i couldn't um and but they're all learning experiences and the times that i succeed are awesome and the times that i fail uh you know <laughs> learn from them but pushing myself in that regard uh moving my body um and stuff i think it's super beneficial and helpful for you uh, but don't go throwing yourself out of your chair on purpose unless you got like a you know soft place to land on uh i mean i do that sometimes i pull up to a couch and just like fell like just dived onto the couch uh because it's super fun and awesome and like i have people around to help me you know uh, i had to throw myself on the car floor once out of my chair and ashley oh, was yelling, yelling at me like why I'm did you do that i know it was a mess that was recent yeah this was recent this was like such a funny story i was um I was grabbing, you know, I think I dropped like my stizzy. Uh, I was over at my girlfriend's place and I dropped my stizzy and it like fell in her closet. And I was trying to like pick it up off the ground with a grabber. The stizzy's a vape, just so people know. They might not know that. Uh, yeah. And vape, anybody, vape pen. It's like can it's like cannabis consumption device. Um, but it's really tiny and like very like slippery, easy to drop. Um, and I didn't have my leg pad on. And I was leaning over to the grabber trying to grab it, and I leaned over too far, and I fell headfirst out of my chair into her closet. Um, <laughs> and we didn't have anybody around that could help lift me. Um, but but here's, here's where the quad ingenuity comes in. And this is some real stuff, you guys. Uh, she had a blow up air mattress. Um, that was also in the closet so i would she moved my chair i like shimmy my body got like in a reasonable position we got the air mattress out and laid it out got it plugged in i crawled onto the center of the air mattress and we oh. inflated it with me on top of the air mattress <laughs> this is some <laughs> real quad gangster stuff and, here. like we parked my chair she parked my chair next to the air mattress and i was able to transfer from the air mattress to my wheelchair um because it was like queen and it was pretty high it was like we uh like it was when we got that was like that's smart that's what we could find for transferring and um yeah i like always think of that story that shit was so crazy but it, like made it we figured it out it was super, super cool shout out kit kat yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, that's some pretty good ingenuity that's pretty man that's that's really smart uh but yeah, that yeah. was like probably the craziest like last minute thing we ever came up with to try to figure out how to get me up off the ground. Uh, you know, I generally try to avoid getting there in the first place, but sometimes you can't help it. Oh uh, man, yeah, yeah dude. How it is out. it falling from your like? I feel like falling from the power chair is even a little bit sketchier or scarier because like I'm not that far off the floor. I feel like if I fall, but you're a little uh, higher up yeah dude it's scary um <laughs> it, it was like a slow fall um it like i did it just like crash to the ground like i kind of caught myself in the closet upside down and i was able to like shoot me down um okay but you know not recommended um i've fallen like i was at my parents last year and um i fell off my bed in the middle of the night like i only done that i know one time my mom rolled me off the bed. Shout out mama. She didn't mean to, but she did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, uh, now I was wrapped up in a blanket. Like my whole body was covered. It, it was like a very comfy, like thud uh, to the ground. <laughs> uh, this one was my fault. Like my leg had spazzed off the side of the bed. And so my leg was hanging off and like, slowly like it just my legs were spasming and i wasn't waking up 
and it just shimmied me closer and closer to the edge so my hip was close enough that like i just slipped off and i fell to the ground like kind of in a sitting position but first but my face hit my foot pedals on my um wheelchair and i like got a really gnarly cut on the inside of my lip um from like bashing my face but that didn't really hurt my body either it was a couple feet thinking maybe i had a bruise um and i was just a little sore the next day but the lip was probably the most damaged I, you know like uh nikki said i've fallen a bunch i've never hurt myself seriously falling <laughs> scratches scrapes um you know maybe a bumper or a bruise i flipped back in my manual chair a couple times and got like a little knot on my head um but outside of that nothing major um that's because i always try to try to be safe i mean be a little reckless sometimes um just because you got to uh, but even being a little reckless uh, you know i do generally try to stay as safe as possible you know if i do start to go down you know just make sure um you know i try to go down in the right kind of way um and it's hard you know when you don't have control of your body but you know you just got to be mindful of your surroundings and figure it out yeah uh that's uh some good uh good story there tom actually because it's just like <laughs> Oh, know. my mom just comments in the chat. That's Mama. Mama Conway, what up, Mama? Good to see you. Okay, have a good day. Cool. Uh, she, she's not happy about you calling her out on the... Uh... <laughs> it was Maxine. No, what had happened is, um, I, again, I think it was probably my fault. I like to sleep pretty close to the edge of my bed. Uh, I don't know why. And, I mean, even in the mornings of my caregivers now, like, um, they'll be helping me in the morning. Like I'll turn on my side, like towards the edge of my bed, and like be right on the edge. Um, and I don't know, uh, yeah. just be really careful. But this instance, I was like fully wrapped in my blanket. Like I think I was fully wrapped. And she went to go and turn me over, and I was just really close to the edge, and I just slipped down. Oh, but she got me up, no problem. And I was younger too, so it was less of me falling and touching to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> A little heavier yeah. now, uh, but oh man, um, <laughs> my, my mama, <laughs> like she, Beautiful. I'm sure I could retell some stories <laughs> of me flipping over my chair. Like the one we talked about last week, <laughs> I flipped over in front in at school, in uh, in front of like all my classmates. Yeah, that one. Um, but get this, my mom. It was the end of the semester. My mom was in school too. And she was uh, thinking her physiology final and in the middle of taking her final and her phone was shut off and she comes out after her test, like I'll relieve to like uh, a dozen voicemails from the principal of the school, like saying that there had been an incident. <laughs> um, you know, freaked her out. She had to rush uh, over to make sure everything was good. Uh, but yeah, no, she, like big shout out to my, uh, and my dad and my whole family. They're really, Really amazing, awesome people, but especially my mom. Mm -hmm. But now with all the stress that I must have brought into her life over the years. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could see little Tom being Hello. a handful. <laughs> oh yeah, I was I was a little I was a little bit of a handful. Just a switch. Just a switch. <laughs> um, did you guys have anything else you want to touch on? Nick or Ashley? Sean, any anything else to add? No, I think um, we shared all our temp stuff. Yeah, yeah we covered a lot. Um, and if again, anybody does have any other questions or anything, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you yes. know, about the temp or anything, you know, whatever AD, whatever you. Yeah. yeah. Any anything? Um, yeah. <laughs> any of the stuff that we talked about today too? Uh, if you like looking for what things that I use. Um, you know, products that I've used in the past, yeah. I would recommend to other quads, uh, anything like that, uh, let us know. Um, and, uh, you know, I could always send links. And Ashley's like uh, showing off the gear, so. Uh... Heck yeah. Okay, yeah so go, check the... out, go check out the Lutual store. Uh... Here, I'll, uh, I'll, do okay. the, I'll do the mirror thing so that it actually reads right. There you go. Also, the beginning of March, if you're going to be in the LA area, uh, we're going to oh, be it's at still upside down. 
<laughs> it reads the other way. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, yeah, check out the merch store. Oops. <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> uh, heck yeah, though. No, it's uh, check out the gear. Um, and also, let's do another quick before we end here. Shout out our sponsors here. We got mobility professionals and urology professionals. Um, just to do a quick recap again. Mobility Professionals is a SoCal-based uh, mobility company. So if you're looking for wheelchairs, any parts, stuff like that, uh, commodes, um, contact them. And Urology Professionals is their sister company. And they are actually a national catheter brand. So anywhere in the country, you can order and check them out. Um, and uh, the information is down below in the description if you guys want to check them out, website and everything. And, and thanks to actually, my models, you, Ashley you and Nikki. Like, can you hold your arm up? Yeah, both of them. Yeah. Oh, nice. uh, okay. I can't do that. I can like toss it up. So, um, to get both uh, arms up, I can pin them together, and if I have them together, I can go up. Because same. It, like it keeps them together. Same, yeah. So, <laughs> but if but yeah, going straight up like this, though, we're they're cheating and we're using more of our biceps to lift our arms rather than our uh, triceps. Exactly. Uh, is how we can get away with that. Uh, like our biceps and our shoulders. Um, but yeah, that's awesome that you uh, can do that. That's super cool. Thank you. Yeah. Ben says I gotta start paying my, my models, you guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't, we for sure. Uh, good night, Sup Celtic Bear. Yeah, thanks everybody for coming and checking us out. Um, we'll be back again next Tuesday for another Live Live to Roll. And the women will be back uh, the first and third Thursday of the month. And um, yeah, definitely check out the sponsors. Check us out. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit that like, like button. Um, you know, let us know if you're enjoying the show. We really appreciate it. Um, all your guys' comments and everything. Uh, you know, helps out the channel, helps it grow, helps the algorithm. You know, spread the literal love um, to everybody else and different people. If you guys have anybody in your life that you think might be interested, um, please, uh, you know, share um, share with them and uh, let them know about the show. And uh, yeah, we love you guys. Yes, period. Yes. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. Oops. Oh, crap. Bye. Let me... Damn it, Thanks for all the guests. Thank you, Sean, for producing. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Let's roll, everybody. <laughs>